Hi, I'm Cosmic Spectrum. Welcome to my art channel. And thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone. I've taken a small break from my regular posting schedule, but here I am with my latest painting. Here's a little preview of what's to come. So in this video, I will take you through the process of this piece that I started about four years ago. It is a mixed media painting called Where's Her Heart that features the main character of my soon to exist, hopefully, comic series called Gloaming Veil. So welcome, welcome, you guys. I hope you've all been doing well. It's been a little bit, but not too long, thankfully. So yeah, I'm just gonna start by telling you why it's taken me this long to finally get to finishing this painting. I originally started this about four years ago. I think it was actually around this time, maybe a little bit later in the summertime of 2018 um, was when I made the or like had the idea for the sketch and made the original sketch in Photoshop. And basically I had this big batch of commissions and I was really crunching them really quickly and i had this random idea for a painting featuring heijin and what i ended up doing was just sketching it real quick in photoshop and printing it out with the intent of executing it quickly but unfortunately i got carried off with a bunch of other work and ever since then honestly things just kept coming up and so here we are almost four years later and i finally managed to find the time to finish it so Actually, I started the process maybe about four months ago when I finally printed out the sketch again and transferred it onto this 9 by 12 uh, watercolor paper sheet, um, very typical media for me. I I've been using this paper for the past few years and in case you were wondering what it is, it's a Saunders Waterford cold press watercolor paper. So I transferred the sketch, but unfortunately my schedule got super hectic once more but yeah in the last couple of weeks i finally found the time to sit down and finish this painting at last so i actually have been thinking about how i will end up executing it a bunch of times over the years because it is something that was on my back burner that i didn't completely forget about obviously and i've been kind of waiting for the opportunity and every time I felt like I was in the cusp of finding some time to do it, I would come up with a quick process rundown or like workflow rundown in my head before I sat down to execute it, which never happened. But um, every time I would come up with some sort of different process. And I'm actually really glad that I've waited this long to do it because this time around, the process that I decided to go with is completely different from what I originally intended including the color scheme, the lighting, and actually a lot of the small details. So it's really interesting what can happen potentially after, you know, you have an idea and then you let it sit for a few years. And obviously my skills have improved since then and I've experimented with a bunch of other media. So it is pretty great. I think that I actually waited this long because I was really fond of this idea initially when I came up with it and I really wanted to give up my best when it came to the execution. So this process is different for several in several ways from my typical process so as you can see the first thing i did was lay down this big overall kind of messy looking wash of pinks and blues uh and purples uh, over the entirety of the image and afterwards i basically just jumped in with a very diluted black ink but went straight into the shadows so i've done something similar before um, a while ago actually, but as you may have noticed most of the videos that I've posted with like ever since I started YouTube actually have all featured artwork that I start by just inking the lines first so basically it was line art heavy and typically inking was just the first step that I took over the past few years uh, and I decided to go back to this process because I think it does create a little bit of a different vibe in the end um, and it seemed to more closely match the type of vibe, vibe that I was going for with the idea of this painting. It's a little more somber and it's a little more serious so I want it to look less cartoony which is basically 
what the result ends up being when you uh, rely heavily on line work. So I started by just using black or I mean started the execution after the watercolor wash just by using this black ink um I think it was the roar and Klingner Klinger I can never pronounce that <laughs> um black ink permanent ink and like I usually do I heavily diluted it with water to just lay down some preliminary washes to establish the lighting scenario and I ended up just figuring out what type of lighting scenario I will go with on the spot. As you can see, it's a bit confusing to watch because I do flip this image around a lot. And the original intent is for the body of the character to be upside down, like floating upside down. But since uh, I want it, like I never actually draw faces upside down. I don't know if other people do, but every time I have an illustration that features a character whose face is supposed to be upside down, I just draw it right side up anyways, and then I flip it to the way that it needs to be. So that's pretty much what I was doing here because it always kind of looks weird if I just draw the face directly upside down, but I digress. So yeah, I figured since um, I'm, I'm doing it upside down, the lighting should kind of be like coming from the top when it's the proper way or from below when I'm drawing it with the face right set up. So <laughs> that's what I ended up going with and I didn't think, I didn't overthink the lighting scenario. So it is by no means accurate or realistic. It's just the very gist of the kind of lighting that I was imagining it, but I never imagined this piece to have very strong in contrasting lighting anyways so i kind of went super easy on it and then i decided to flesh out the line work a little bit using a pen oh sorry using a brush which is again uh, a departure from my typical process because as many of you probably know i typically use a nib for inking G nib specifically. So in this case, I just used a very thin brush. I don't remember what size it was exactly, but it was like one of the thinner ones that I have and it's longer so it holds a little bit more ink. But yeah, so I kind of fleshed out a little bit of the line work, but tried my best to go easy on it because it's very... Um, I, could, I could have easily gotten carried away and lined like the whole thing, which is my tendency so it, it was i had to really control like the amount of lines that I, that i put in and i think i slightly overdid it on the face if i were to do it again I'd, I'd probably just leave the lips alone and kind of render them out later using color because um i will later on in the process of this piece go back to using watercolors so while the line work is going on i'll just tell you a little bit about what I'm going to be using um, later on in the process. So typically I use a lot of colored inks, different colors, and for whatever reason in this piece I decided to just go back to using watercolors. And the palette that you see me use in this video is one I've had for very uh, many years and I believe it was just from a set of tubed liquid, or not liquid, but like um like tubed watercolors i think the brand was pentel i think it was like some sort of starter set they were not artist grade but they surprisingly like behave pretty well you know i've been using them this whole time albeit not very often for some reason i don't gravitate much towards using watercolors but uh it's lasted me this whole time and the colors are vibrant and nice and they mix well and from what i can recall none of them are particularly grainy but yeah, I don't even remember which specific set it was, but I believe I squeezed the watercolors into the palette uh, maybe like 10 years ago, I'm gonna say, so it's been a while. But yeah, so with the hands, as you can see here, I felt like I needed a little bit more precision and I was also getting a little bit impatient with using a brush, so I did pull out my good old uh, G-nib to ink the hands which worked out relatively well i think but from what i can remember that's the only place where i used the genie genie to ink but yeah so um i actually wanted to also tell you where the idea for this piece came about um and why it looks the way that it does so originally the idea that i had uh was of Hajin 
floating horizontally like i had an image in my mind of this long horizontal um painting or drawing with her body just straight like not a weird angle or anything but because she has such long hair i couldn't really visually figure out where i wanted the hair to go i apologize about the ac coming on so anyways yeah the problem that i was facing with the horizontal um composition was that her long hair was just going to be i guess coming down on one side of the image and i typically lean towards like really balanced compositions that are almost like cent uh, central or centered i guess and so i really didn't like the idea of just a bunch of hair being on one side and then nothing on the other so i thought about it for a while and in the end came up with this instead where it's the same pose but from a different angle so from the front angle and that way the hair was just coming straight down and the composition suited the mood much better than my initial idea and that's how i ended up making this quick sketch all those years ago and now that i'm thinking about it i actually have somewhat something of a solution for the previous horizontal composition in my head which i may or may not attempt to execute sometime soon i think because there's still something about the simple horizontal floating um pose that like from side from the side that i still want to try out but anyways so that's kind of how where this pose came from and i don't know if you can even tell but yeah i think it should be evident enough that she's floating it's actually something that i had a bit of an issue with when i was um painting this towards the end or like when i was finalizing it towards the end because in the initial sketch i drew i drew her dress to be somewhat transparent so underneath like you know i i drew out the legs and whatnot so the perspective and such made it more clear as to what's going on with her body whereas when i was <laughs> executing it um her legs and all the the anatomy pretty much got covered up with the dress and it looked kind of weird to me and i wasn't sure if it was as effective w without seeing any of the limbs but you know whatever it is what it is and it's done now so yeah so before I go on, I'm just going to take a small break to tell you guys about this video sponsor, Skillshare. If you haven't tried Skillshare before, I highly recommend that you take a look. It's an online learning platform where you can find thousands of classes on a huge selection of topics such as drawing, painting, writing, art journaling, business, freelancing, and pretty much anything you can think of. More classes are being added every single day and so it's an ever-growing platform full of interesting new skills to explore. I've got a couple of trips coming up this fall and I've been super interested in starting a travel sketchbook this year, like a travel journal. It's something I've wanted to do for many, many years and unfortunately I've never managed to start due to a combination of fear and just like being unsure where to start. But after taking a quick look at Skillshare, I actually found the perfect class for this particular thing, which is called Travel Sketching Essentials Capture the Light by James Ray. Richards. I love the quick and loose look of his artwork and I cannot wait to put his approach into action. I think having a travel journal would be such a nice thing to look back on and I'm super excited to try out his method. You can watch this class and thousands of others on Skillshare by clicking the link in my description and joining for a free trial. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And now back to the video. So as you can see, at this point, I am just rendering the hair, which was the most exciting part about this painting for me. Uh, I really, really love painting hair or drawing hair, um, whichever. It's always been one of my favorite things to do. And this particular approach where I just um, basically tackle it completely with shapes, uh, tonal shapes of different tones. I've done this a few times before and I really really like the result that it gives so there's some Like it has the look of some line work, but not really it's it's a mixed bag and it's also a departure from a very um, How do I put it like line work heavy and and then just like a quick one tone wash with leaving out highlights type of look that I, I'm sure you might 
you'll see what I'm talking about if you look at any of my previous artworks. That you, that's usually how I approach hair. So this is something different that I seldom do these days. And it was really nice to go back to this way of rendering hair. I think it looks really interesting. And the reason why I was able to kind of just freehand it and decide which parts are going to be dark and which parts are going to be lighter on the spot was because it didn't really matter since the hair takes up so much of the space in this composition and it doesn't really interact with any other elements and it has a lighter background. Um, it didn't really matter how, like the distribution, the tonal distribution didn't matter too much, which is why I could just really relax and uh, just arbitrarily pick the lighter parts and the darker parts. And it is a very, a very relaxing type of um, activity, I guess, because usually I have to put more thought into choosing specific places where like the tone usually tonal tonal contrast matters a lot more in the drawings that i make so this is quite kind of a breath of fresh air by comparison but yeah um i knew also from the start that i wasn't going to use any other colored inks so i more or less just rendered in some shadows or put in suggested some shadows uh, because i knew that i was going to add more or elaborate on them with watercolors and I wanted to essentially do most of the hair with the ink and then leave the rest to watercolors afterwards. So that was my plan from the get-go. I also wanted to quickly let you guys know where I got the inspiration for this particular process. Because as you will see later on, I bring some white gouache into this painting and i essentially white out all the background watercolor wash so it, it was initially put down just to be the base color or the base gradient um for the character but not the background and it will show through a little bit but uh it's a really cool technique that i did not come up with myself and saw uh, where did I see it? There's this artist that I follow, this comic artist on Instagram. His name is Matteo Scalera, I think, is how you pronounce it. Um, I'll, I'll link his work in the description. I'm a big fan of his work, especially his line work. And he does a lot of traditional... I think he only does traditional work, actually. And so he will post a lot of like snippets of his comic panels, which are all traditionally inked. And he also does some larger illustrations using this type of process i'm not sure what kind of paint he uses maybe gouache or something could be watercolor though but this is like i pretty much wanted to try out his process of putting like making a sketch and then putting down this big wash of uh like a gradient of colors underneath and then proceeding with the rest of the execution uh, i thought the results look absolutely amazing and it really brings in a lot of texture into the piece which is something that i've been after um, as of late, I, I've grown a little bit bored, I guess you could say, with my typical approach. And I really want to try to bring more texture and just like more interesting marks, I guess, into my traditional pieces. So this was my attempt. And as you can see, I just added some colors into the skin. It was very simple. I just mixed a skin tone a bit darker than I typically do because I knew that it would go over. I didn't want it to get lost on top of the colored wash. So that's what I did. And now I'm essentially just filling in the area with white gouache, like the background area with uh, white gouache. And notably, I'm leaving a little bit of space around the character and not trying to get super close to the line work, the borders, um, because I think it creates a super unique and nice, like satisfying type of look where there's just a little bit of color pe peeking through. And I think it makes it look like it's almost... <laughs> I used to do this thing in Photoshop to make, to soften the look of a digital painting where I would duplicate the layer and set the top layer to low transparency but blur it out and multiply it on top of the original artwork layer like i don't know if you can just imagine what that would look like but it looks really cool it gives a painting the soft glow 
but it's not it's not an illuminating glow it's just like uh it basically softens the edges of the line work so i think this is just a little bit similar to that like uh putting like leaving some space between the edges of the character and the white gouache in the background um creates kind of a similar effect anyways it's a long tangent that, that may or may not be relevant in this piece so yeah actually when i originally planned out this painting i did not plan for it to have the circular element in the center but when i was looking at the sketch right before i started the execution it occurred to me that it might look nice with a circular element behind her because um i figured it just looked a little bit too bottom heavy and uh, I don't know, I just wanted to put a circle in the background, but I didn't really think about what color I was going to make the circle. And so this purple that you see here, uh, also gouache, by the way, is just some sort of like last minute decision, which I don't regret. I think it did turn out, turn out interesting. And as you probably glimpsed at the very beginning, I ended up putting a floral pattern into the circle. And that's also something that I absolutely did not plan for the from the beginning and um now i'm just putting in the detail also opaque with gouache same color as the circle of the tears coming down um her face and into the hair originally my idea for these was that i wanted to i wanted them to be shiny in some way so i was considering using like a metallic paint which Maybe I could have used, but I don't know. I ended up settling for an opaque color and I thought something holographic would look good. It's kind of thematically a continuation of the kind of stuff that I was doing for the cover of my previous art book, art book for, from a few years ago called Milk of Melancholy, where on the cover I use holographic elements and especially on the back cover, there's like similar shapes with the water... Um, you know, actually, in my mind, I had something, like, elementally, it's not water. I tried to make it resemble mercury, like, what mercury looks like, but, you know, it's, like, one of those details that nobody cares about. But, uh, it's, I, I should have just looked a reference, because it looks interesting. It's, um, it kind of behaves very differently than water does, but anywho. So, yeah, I, I had the idea of making the tears a gradient as well. But since the area was so small on the painting, I didn't want to do it with a brush. So I just ended up adding the couple of extra colors that I was going to put in afterwards after scanning it because I, I, I didn't want to risk like ruining the painting. So yeah. Yeah. And now I am also using white gouache for her scars and... I don't know exactly why I decided to make them white. It was more of a visual decision. I didn't want this painting to look super disturbing or like gory. And I felt like if I were to darken the scars and introduce any sort of red colors or like try to make them more realistically look like scars, it would just give this painting kind of like a horror type of vibe, which... I didn't really want, so I ended up using white instead, kind of to match the background and um, to have them stand out more. And yeah, here's the satisfying part of me peeling off the tape, which is always the favorite part. But um, usually people, usually artists pull off the tape at the very end. But here, I kind of put it, pull. I, I just, my patience gave out and I decided to pull it off halfway through or I guess, yeah, it ended up being maybe a third through the process. And afterwards, I assessed the situation and decided that I should put in a significant amount of work still because it looked just, it just looked kind of unfinished and empty to me. So I decided to pull out my set of Polychromos colored pencils and just kind of elaborate on some of the fabric folds and add a little bit of add a little more definition to the body which you can barely even see and i do think it helped a lot i actually put a little bit more work into it digitally afterwards as well i kind of regret not erasing the sketch underneath because as you can see the pencil does not cover it up and the 
like the the white pencil did not cover it up at all i expected it to but i suppose it's still kind of transparent so the you, you could still see the pencil underneath which is not ideal but i guess it's fine and so afterwards when i scanned it i went in photoshop and kind of fixed up those super visible pencil lines up at the top and then i assessed the situation once more and decided that the circle just was not doing anything for me and i figured that maybe introducing some sort of texture into it would probably help and so i decided to make a floral kind of pattern inside the circle starting from the outer edges one of the biggest reasons why I decided that it should be a floral pa floral pattern is, again, to kind of step a, a little further away from the spookiness of the piece and uh, make it a little more, I guess, ethereal in, in the vibe. Because, as you can see, the colors are pretty... Like, they're almost muddy. I think they're fine. I do personally like them, but they are very subdued and not... I mean, I could I could easily see how if I used red instead of white on her scars, it would have looked scary. So, I pulled out the gouache again, and I took my time to just draw out these little flowers all around the circle. And I do think it added a lot to the piece. I'm really glad that I took this um, kind of like not overly pre-planned approach, which I suppose is kind of typical for me, but I ended up um being kind of experimental with the design not too much as you can see it still looks pretty basic maybe i should have looked up references for like a specific flower to make it more interesting but yeah um like i was saying i took the more experimental approach and i think the result came out better than what i had pictured in my head which is great because that basically never happens but yeah so at this point, we're pretty much approaching the end of this piece, and I just wanted to mention that the reason why I finally found time for it is because, as some of you may know, I have a new art book in the works with the publisher 3D Total, which is a huge honor to work with them because they've worked with some artists that I really admire, notably Loish, and the quality of the art books is just so nice, and I'm, I cannot wait to see what the art book will turn out like. And yeah, um, obviously this art book is full of my original and personal stuff, mostly, and I thought that this was the perfect opportunity to take the time and to finish executing this piece that I could not find the excuse to do over the past few years. And I'm so happy I did it because it turned out uh, better than I expected, like I said, and uh, I do think that it has... A very different vibe from a lot of my art other artwork and i will say that this type of look is closer to my intentions so usually i just roll with whatever happens and that's what my art ends up looking like but i do have an idea in my head of the direction in which i eventually want to take my art and i'm gonna say that i'm happy to say that this is a lot closer to what i imagine than my typical artwork so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you check out the new art book Kickstarter that I will have sometime next month. I will definitely announce the exact date as it gets closer and I will also have a landing page um, link on all my social media. So if you don't want to miss it, you can um, just bookmark it for the future. But yeah. I will apologize ahead of time because I will definitely be doing my best to promote this art book. It means a lot to me and I'll probably be talking about it a lot and you'll probably get sick of hearing about it. But this is basically the start of that. So yeah, thanks again for watching my video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!